Hola. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. So, last night. Here's the thing. Last night, um, I did my first shoot in my studio. Is this camera crooked? When I use this certain tripod, sometimes it makes it just slightly crooked and it gets on my nerves. But uh, last night, I shot in my studio, my first shoot there. It was really fun. I was all aerialed up. Um, yeah. And here's the thing. The other thing. There's lots of things in this video, I'm sure. Um, I still need to lose about 15 pounds to get back to where I feel good and like comfortable with myself. And I'm really glad that last night when I put on my aerial skirt, it still fit. Now granted, when I wore it in WWE, it was like here. Whereas last night it was here, so like instead of being like to here, it was like there. But I was still able to put it on. It wasn't hard, so that made me feel better. Got the fan on. It's hot. Deal with it. So um, last night for my shoot, or really with dinner and then going into my shoot, we drank this um, Zinfandel here. You can see we drank a good portion of it. This is huge. Um, I went to a wine tasting last summer, and that was from the wine tasting place. It was a really good price. I forget how much it was. So we've had it for almost a year. It was last August. So, um, yeah, I was like, you know what, let's crack that open, you know? It was just sitting in my studio with all of our other stuff that we need to organize and put away. And I was like, dude, let's just get into it. And boy, did I get into it. I had so much fun last night. Like, you don't even know. <laughs> So much fun and shooting, just messing around, getting crazy. Happy birthday, bitch. <laughs> I should do it like that. <laughs> Happy birthday, bitch. Sorry, I missed it yesterday. That's for the people who were here last night to know and for you to never find out. But <laughs> I'm hurting today. Um, this morning I had four pieces of toast. Usually I only eat one piece of toast if I eat toast in the morning. But um, I was like, dude, I'm gonna eat two. And after I ate the two, I started to feel a little bit better, but I was like, dude, I need some more. So I ate four pieces of toast this morning, whatever. Once I feel better later today, I'm supposed to do some extra hard cardio. Um, but I did order from Ralph's and they have this Amy's no chicken noodle soup it's so good i just know my body wants that sodium right now i crave that taste so it's on its way i'm super excited about that but today i'm going to be in slow-mo um slow-mo rabidowitz over here so originally i was going to have um, either yesterday or today i was going to put my new vlog out but that's not going to happen I got to go through the stuff I shot yesterday, send it out to my um, orders that people place with me, and then um, I need to post on my OnlyFans and on my secret society. So there's a lot to do. Uh, it's already noon, and usually by noon, I like to have at least half of my list done. Oh, I thought that was my Ralph's coming up to the door. Um, half of my list done, but dude I got like two things done <laughs> but it's okay I told myself it's Friday and usually on Fridays if I like need to pick up some slack from the week I don't mind like staying up super late shooting or editing and things like that so whatever Danielle today is gonna have her co-workers come over and we're gonna have a little sushi party so that'll be good so um, yeah, I just wanted to throw a little here's the thing video. Last night I partied hard while creating and sometimes that's what I do. It's been a while though. Usually I don't like lime sparkling water as much, but this one's pretty good. It's not over limey. I think my order's here. 
But um, yeah, I thought I'd just do a quick little here's the thing video. Last night, I finally got to shoot in my new studio. We partied. I acted crazy. <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. But uh, I had a lot of fun. That's for damn sure. I had lots of fun. And you know, it just goes to like, you know, it's been a crazy week for me. Um, I found out that my friend passed away on Monday, which opens up a bunch of different triggers for me. But um, I think I'm going to. I guess with the age of the corona, they just dropped it. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. <sighs> Shall we go get it? I think so. Here's the thing. I'm going to show you guys what I got. So, I got some more sparkling water, pink grapefruit. I love grapefruit, but I also love the lemon. It just depends. And then, got some veggie bacon my soup i got a couple cans um some no salt black beans i can eat beans all day i love beans all kinds of beans i just i love beans i'm a beaner <laughs> more beans i got four cans of beans and let me see how many soups did i get i forget i might have gotten four soups as well Okay, so I got four cans of beans, five cans of beans, six cans of beans. <laughs> what does Shelly Martinez order to her house? Six cans of no salt beans, four cans of no chicken noodle Amy soup, veggie bacon, and sparkling water. There was a couple other things on there, but they didn't have it, so um, they just took it off. I don't know if you guys use Instacart, that's what I've been using. I like it, but yeah, I went on Amazon and I saw with the Amy's, I can get like a, a 12 pack, I think it was, for 25 bucks. I was like, ooh, that's good, but I didn't feel like waiting for it. And then I thought maybe I will just I'm trying to organize this right here in front of me, which I'm going to take it to the kitchen and put it away anyway, so I don't know why it's so important to me. But, um, what was I talking about? <laughs> Guess it's time for another drink. Yeah, right. I'm really dehydrated, though. I need some water. It's so funny. Last night, I like to use this big old cup. I don't even know where I got it from. Um, it's like, looks like a, someone stole it from a restaurant. <laughs> I don't know how I acquired it. I've had it for a long ass time, but I like to drink out of it because it's so big. That's what she said. And, um, I just drink more water. I could fit more water in there. And when I sometimes go out and about, I just have that cup and I just refill it where I can. And people think it's weird, but whatever. Sometimes, um... I leave my water bottle, my refillable one, at home, so I go to the cup, but I remembered what my point was going to be at. Okay, so what my point was going to be at, oh my goodness, what my point was, um, you know, I found out my friend passed away on Monday. Um, it just opened up so much, and then before that, you know, we were going through this move. Um, it was a lot, so there was a lot that came with that as well. And honestly, just really processing a lot, you know. For those of you in the wrestling community, you know, we had all these people come out and speak out against different predators in wrestling. And then while that was happening, that seemed to be happening in entertainment world in general. So there's that and then not only and then everything that comes with that you know especially when i thought i knew certain people and to find out that they're just these that are really terrible people it just really triggered my trust issues as i've talked about so filtering through that i've had a couple friends that um reach out to me that 
honestly, like long story short, from my point of view, I feel like they haven't been good friends to me. So I decided to cut them out of my life and it was really hard for two people in particular because I feel guilt. And I talked about this on VOC Nation on my Shelly Live on Tuesday. But, um, you know, a lot of times with me, my death anxiety gets the best of me when I cut people out of my life that I just, it's not good for my energy, you know, or my mental health. And the reason why I feel so guilty is because mine and Danielle's dad, my sister Danielle, um, he died in a car accident like a couple months before I turned 18. Or does I, or, no, I was already 18. Yeah, I was already 18. So when I was 18, he died in a car accident. So, um, and Danielle was nine. So what had happened leading up to that is I wasn't really speaking to my dad because there was this whole situation. Uh, he used to always take me and Danielle for visitation to Chuck E. Cheese. And, um, when we went one time my dad unfortunately he was a tweaker there's a lot that goes with it i'm not gonna get into it in this video but um you know he just was in that vibe and something had happened i think he thought that he lost danielle or something like that and then when she was like playing like she was just in the balls he got mad and when she was walking, like she was really little, um, he kicked her in the butt and I got so mad, like so mad. Now, not to bring the party down, but when I was little, him and my mom, when they were still married, they got in this really violent fight and I just remember, and maybe this will help some of you understand me and why my mouth gets me in trouble sometimes and I have to say something. Um, it's not like I'm like, oh, I'm going to say something. My mouth gets me in trouble. A lot of times it takes for me to be like whatever I need to say and open my mouth about. It's festering inside me so much and eating away at me. That's why I say I have to get it out. You know what I mean? And a lot of times I get in trouble for it, but I don't regret any of it. Like anytime I open my mouth and got in trouble because... I had to release that energy out of me so it's not in me anymore you know what i mean so my parents used to get violent a lot and i just remember i had this little chihuahua and um i was holding him and i opened my door because i heard this loud crash and i saw my dad on top of my mom and he was like holding her down and like yelling and so i yelled you guys are scaring me and he said oh I'm gonna come after you now or something like that and he came after me and he picked me up by my neck and threw me against the wall and it happened so fast my first concern was my dog because I was holding my little chihuahua and um, you know I just remember my mom like kind of hovering over me saying she's just a little girl leave her alone or whatever um, so when he kicked Danielle's butt at Chuck E. Cheese, um, and I'm not saying, oh, like he beat her up, like he literally kicked her in the butt, you know, um, it just triggered all that. And so I told my dad, unless he at least tried to stop doing drugs, that I didn't want to see him. I didn't want him around Danielle because I didn't trust him and what his, he's capable of. And he tried to flip it and he's like, and I brought up when he picked me up and threw me against the wall and he was like, oh, you don't think I have nightmares about that every day? No, bitch, you don't. You don't think about it. You haven't thought about it until right now when I just said it. So the conversation didn't go very well. 
so I was ignoring him when I graduated high school like I remember I was like should I even invite him and my grandma who's my mom's mom was like yes Charlie you have to invite him to the graduation and I remember when the graduation was over I went to go like find my family and I saw my dad like on top of a chair like looking for me with flowers and I just turned around and walked the other way I was like no so fast forward so that was June of 1998 so December of 98 is when my dad passed away so between that time I still didn't really talk to him I was already not talking to him going into the um, graduation but I definitely didn't talk to him after that much so I remember in December of, uh, 1998 he called the house my mom's house and I remember my boyfriend at the time was like you know you should talk to your dad so I picked up the phone I talked to him and he was just like oh I'm gonna go to Texas that's where my grandpa lived and when I get back I want to take you guys to Disneyland da -da 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 -da, the beach and I'm like okay so he was like well I'm gonna leave on this certain day um, can I like see you guys before I leave and I was like all right so we had a good time whatever and it was crazy because my dad when he hugged me goodbye because at the time I was going to community college so I had to like I had I was on a time frame of like hanging out so I had to go to my class which is in the evening and I just remember he hugged me like extra tight he's like remember Shelly I love you and so I was like that was weird but okay well like a couple days later I got the call that he died in a car accident so that kind of started my whole guilt of letting people who negatively affect my mental health my spiritual health go because in my head I'm traumatized that if I'm mad at somebody they might die and then I'm gonna feel bad for being mad at them another example is Ashley Massaro Ashley was my homegirl I still consider her my homegirl but there was a couple times where she just was really blowing me off and I realized that it was because she had like a couple different boyfriends like like the first time she did it she had a boyfriend and another time she did it she had a boyfriend different guys and then another time and it was like throughout many like a span of years right so it's so funny I just talked about this as well on Shelly Live um, I was watching something and somebody on the TV had said something like oh I'm just the kind of girl like my friends give me a hard time all the time that when I have a boyfriend like I drop everything and I'm just about them and I don't get back to people and that's when it clicked to me I was like oh my gosh that's what Ashley does to me so when I saw Ashley for the last time in person um, leading up to it she was kind of calling me out she was like I know you're mad just like tell me what's wrong and I was like it's fine it's just like whatever so when I saw her in person I was like you know what it is Ashley I've realized that whenever you have a boyfriend, you blow me off. It hurts my feelings, but that's what you do. I accept it. That's just how you are. So I'm not mad about it anymore. And she laughed. She's like, you're not the first one to tell me. I know. I'm so sorry. And we had a conversation. So then that was in March. And then of course in May, that's when she passed away. So again, somebody who I was mad at and I'm not saying that she was bad for my mental health or anything. It just, I guess, you know, a little bit in a way it did because what, the re real reason why I was bothered until I figured that out that Ashley would do that is it's like, Ashley knew how other people hurt me, especially in wrestling. So when she would do this, it kind of felt like, oh, are you doing to me what other people in wrestling do and it hurt sorry damn camera so in a sense it did affect me in a negative way whereas like it triggered other things 
but it wasn't like she was toxic or anything. She's my homegirl, you know? She was there for me when I was in really bad times. So, but again, it brings up that guilt. And I'm so glad that I was able to see her in person and have that conversation with her, you know, because if I didn't, I would have felt really bad. So going back to these two friends um, that I no longer choose to keep in my life. In different ways, they both, it, like, it's not comparable um, how things went down to where I decided I don't want them in my life anymore. It's just completely different situations. However, I'm just like, I don't want to be mad because if I found out they passed away, that would suck. And then that's where I get myself in trouble in the past is I think of things in those terms and then I allow people back in and then I get hurt over and over and over. And then that's when you guys see me be a mess and I'm all pissed off, all butt hurt, like whatever. So what I've really learned about myself in this last, I guess you could say month, two months, going on two months, is... How can I say this without sounding like whatever? I'm just going to say it. I'm just better by myself. Um, I'm the type of person that I can, I love going out. I love having a good time. I love feeding off of people's energy and just chilling and vibing with people. But then I also like to be by myself. And I always thought that like, yay, that's awesome. I can do, I'm good by myself and I'm also good with other people. So like whatever situation whatever but now I'm realizing I get more work done when I'm by myself whether that's more work with my spirituality whether that's more work with my mental health whether it's like literal literal <laughs> literal work where it's like photo shoots videos editing when I'm by myself I'm sure a lot of you can relate. It's like, I don't have to worry about if someone's in a bad mood and then maybe now I'm allowing it to affect me, which I shouldn't do, but sometimes it's hard. Or saying something wrong or someone taking something the wrong way because they're in a mood. Or maybe I just don't want to talk at all unless like a camera's on. Like I just sitting here. Like honestly, before I was I hit record. I did a couple snaps to my secret society, but other than that, like, I don't feel good. I'm hungover, you know? So, I just realized that I don't want to hang out, really. And what I do when I do hang out with people now, which I didn't do before, and this is very new, is before I commit to hanging out with someone or letting someone come over, I think, what are we going to talk about? After you say, so what's new? What have you been doing? What are you working on? How's the family or how's the dogs? After that's all done, which could be wrapped up in about 15 minutes, what is there to talk about? Is it gonna be awkward and just kind of like, so? And if that's the vibe, then I don't do it and I don't wanna hang out. And I realized that I've been in a lot of those situations. And then I also realize a lot of people who I've been bitching and moaning and complaining about for years that have been ignoring me, they don't include me. A lot of those people, I don't have anything to talk about. Like the things that interest me and that I wanna talk about, and it doesn't even have to be that deep. Often, yes, I get to very deep conversations. Me and Danielle talk deeply. Me and Metal Jesus talk deeply. Uh, me and Jen Thomas talk deeply. Um, let's see who else do I hang out with me and Kat Kat Katarina Waters um, winter we talk deeply so it's like me and Francine we talk deeply my friend Karen in Vegas we talk deeply um, Lizzie Valentine deep like the people who I choose to spend my time with even if it's just text or a phone call we talk deeply that's just what's up why my camera keeps timing out it is known that this particular camera 
will time out at like 30 minutes but i haven't been talking for 30 minutes and then it clicks off Ugh. anyways i don't know if it, has to, it says it's overheated i don't know if it has to do with because it's hot um but it's not hot enough to put the ac on so that's why i didn't put the ac on but anyway so it's not like me and the people i mentioned we are like oh let's get all deep because that's what we do we talk deep it just naturally goes that way. Oh, how are you? After that 15 minute wrap up goes on, it's like, oh, you know, so I experienced this. And then when they share, or if I share that experience, the conversation starts to happen and it starts to flow and it ends up getting deep. And a lot of people who I've been bitching and moaning, complaining about my feelings hurt. Um, I don't, really have conversations like that maybe here and there but honestly a lot of the people who i used to be all upset that like they just ignored me especially after either i got fired from wwe or i stopped doing wrestling altogether uh or got with metal jesus i lost a lot of my guy friends um it's like a lot of those people They just like talk about things I don't care about. And a lot of times they care, they talk about other people and I don't like that. And that's when I check out. I just was in a story not too long ago, um, privately, about a group of girls who I used to share a locker room with. And I told them, I was like, oh, you know, the rest of us girls used to call them the mean girls. And they were like, wow, that's a trip. Like, I, I don't, I mean, I don't really know those girls, but like, I don't know them like that. And so I was telling them, I was just like, yeah, you know, with the mean girls, I remember they, in my opinion, I felt like they were cool with me being the new member of the mean girls. So they would hang out with me a little bit. And then um, one time I remember we were, it was after a TV taping, we were hanging out, we we're eating, and one of the girls got a phone call. And the phone call, I don't even know who it was from, was telling her that somebody that they had recently been, um, the company we were working for, um, I guess tried out <coughs> Schultz excuse me, tried out, um, they were going to hire her and then they said what her role was going to be. So this mean girl got so upset. She, I was like, wow, what, something bad happened. And she's like, can you believe it? They're going to have, they're going to hire so-and-so and she's going to be doing this, this, and this. And, um, and then they said a little dig. They were like, how is she going to talk on the mic? because, and then they made fun of the way she speaks. And I just remember, I don't know why I remember this, but I just remember I was looking at the TV, there's a big screen TV, and I was hearing what the mean girls were talking about. But I was looking at the TV and there was um, surfing and skateboarding going on. So like, I was just, if you really know me, you know I'm all about the surfing and skateboarding. I don't do it. I used to have a skateboard. Um, I didn't do like crazy tricks or anything. I just liked, you know, using it instead of like a bike or whatever. But um, I just love it. So it's, I'm SoCal, baby. That's just what's up. I grew up around that. I love that stuff. So I just remember it's almost like I just like, it wasn't even that I was tuning them out. Now that I think of it, it was like I couldn't even look at them because when I, they were talking, I remember it was almost like the Wizard of Oz moment where that curtain got pulled back and I was like, ooh, I'm just going to look over here. I'm still going to listen. And then when they were, when they said, the one mean girl said the crack about the girl that just got hired and made fun of the way she spoke, I had it. And the thing is, the girl they were talking about at that time, I didn't like that girl because she screwed me over back in the day. So. I could have easily been like, oh, they hired her, ugh, she did this to me and told them. But when I saw that they got all upset, guys, I just gotta make this suit. My camera died anyway, so here we go. So, 
when they made that crack about that girl that's just so soon i had it and like i said i could have easily just been like joining in but i was like so what if she got hired and what they want her to do is so unique anyways like it's not gonna hurt anybody's spot so like who cares and who cares if you think that's how she sounds when she talks if they want to use her if they want to hire her and if they want to put her on their mic that's her business like it was just weird so i just said you know what i can't i said something to the effect of like i can't sit here anymore and listen to this i feel like i'm gonna throw up so i'm gonna go get some sushi i'll talk to you guys later all right so i just wanted to throw this little tidbit in here so i'm editing this video i literally stopped it right where i just did and i remember what i said I say, I'd rather choke myself out than to sit here and be a part of this conversation. I don't know why I felt it was important to share that, but that's what I said. And so after that, the mean girls, they just didn't like me. That's for sure. And I really don't care. But a couple members of those mean girls, it has bothered me because there was times where i felt like i had moments with them you know and connected and trying to just survive in the wrestling world where it's super hard especially when you're a female you know and the things that come within at that time like you know women's wrestling wasn't really what it is today and the diversity and like just getting more opportunities so it was kind of like we were girls in my era we we were helping build I feel what's going on today to be honest with you so I think about moments like that and it's like I mean people learn they grow maybe the mean girls aren't mean girls anymore and that's my prayer for them because even though they were the mean girls and they just really mean things to us girl other girls I see good in each and every one of them. That's why, again, I was so butthurt about them for so long. So, I think about it and I think about like, it'd be nice to see some people, like when I used to do conventions and things like that. But even then, unless you were somebody that I already talked to prior to being at the autograph signing or at the wrestling show, there's really not much that's being said. Now, granted, I've had some really awesome conversations with people, especially in the indies, that maybe I just had that one conversation with them because I was on a show that they were at, and that is freaking awesome. So I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about these people who I've allowed to disrupt my peace and been all like, my feelings hurt because of whatever reasons, and it really bothering me, you know? And that's why, like, fast forward to today, and what I've been just really feeling naturally in the last couple months is who cares? And I wanted to share all that because I know sometimes people give me flack or they're like, even people that are you know supporters of me, whether they're fans or people I've shared a locker room with or my friends are like, you can't let people bother you. You just can't, but it's like, you know what? I'm a person that that's just how I am. I do care. It's not that I get validation from other people's opinion of me. It's that we're people, we're human beings. And if I shared a moment with you or whatever, yeah, I kind of do take things to heart because like, that's what life's about. Sharing, connecting, whatever. Even if it's just a simple conversation about the weather. If it's a genuine, cool conversation where you feel your soul is connecting to somebody else in that moment, like, yeah, I take it to heart. And I don't take any of my butt hurt feelings back. I don't take back any of the times where I have been bitter. I don't take back any of the times where I was very raw in my feelings, even when it's gotten me in trouble. Because I had to go through all of that to stand here right now making my freaking Amy's No Chicken Noodle Soup after having a bomb ass time shooting my studio last night. Um, that that's I'm here to say I don't care and it's not like Psh, I don't care I don't care it's like 
I don't care. I'm making my soup, talking with my fine folks over here, and then I'm gonna do my thing. So like, I don't care, you know? And that's the thing. So let's see how this soup's getting along. Ooh, look at that, yum. Ooh, look at it. <laughs> Steamed it up. Mmm. So yeah, like I said, this here, here's the thing video had a lot of here's the things. But you know, I haven't done a here's the thing video for a while. And there's a lot of things that have been happening in the life of Shelly Martinez over here. Um, I'm still not really caring about Instagram, but if you want to follow me on there, go ahead and follow me. I just really promote what I'm doing on there and not even full heartedly like I used to. I'm just really using Twitter and I hope they don't come after me on Twitter. It's like, dude, come on, especially Twitter because I've been doing that the longest. That's been my thing and I'm really proud of even though I only have 66k followers on there, to me it means a lot because I built that off of like from when I first started and that was just like so long ago before Twitter like really became Twitter. Even though it's like people are kind of like eh Twitter now but it's, it's a lot of people still use it. But anyways I'm gonna wait for the soup to cool off. I was gonna share it with you guys here but I'm gonna burn my mouth so uh wait you know this is what I'll do once it cools off before I let you guys go I'll wait for it to cool off and get my first bite with you guys all right I think it's ready there <laughs> blessed are you Lord our God King of the universe who brings forth fruit from the ground the tree and a variety of nourishment I just pray over this day for my viewers and myself keep us all safe and healthy in your name amen sorry don't mean to offend all right oh my gosh i can eat 10 of these mm. all right i'm gonna try to eat this slowly so that i can enjoy it because i'm the type of person i'll eat fast because it tastes so good and then I'm like, oh, I want more. And then I overeat. Take my time. Gonna put friends on. <laughs> and then finish my meal. Take a little bit. And then I'm gonna work out and then get the day truly started. All right. Have an awesome weekend, everyone. Sending you all positive vibes, love, and light. And until my next video, I'm Shelly from Kelly. And I'll be smelling you later. Adios. Bye, baby. Okay, we're just gonna do this. I want you to lay down for a little bit, and then I'll give you a treat when we go outside.